I'm R.A. and this is Daily and we're here with Sunreal who's going to be performing live with Down With Webster tonight at Cowboys. So Sunreal, uh, Daily. Yeah, how's the tour been going so far with Deep Pride, Down With Webster? A lot of Canadian talent. How's it been? It's been great, man. Like It's just good to get on the stage and be performing with other talented artists. Down With Webster obviously brings out like a lot of uh, young, young fans that are <laughs> cult which is rad. Deep Pride's doing a really good job opening up the show. And, yeah. Um, yeah, it's just good to go out to some of these spots that we've been before, maybe haven't been for a while, and just connect with some of our fans and, and gain a lot of new right fans. On. So, right yeah. on. A lot of it's Canadian stuff going on, a lot of Timmy stops on the road. Oh, yeah, man. Yo, you already know, bro. You already know. <laughs> no, we be hitting the Timmy's, like, actually, like, that's our most hit spot for food straight out. It's just so cheap, man. Yo, like, how can you, you go wrong? Know. And plus, like, uh, I don't know. It's just really good for Instagram. It's the most Canadian thing you can do. So, <laughs> you know, take a picture at every stop and we're good. It's one thing that's in Vancouver and it's over here as well. Yeah, yeah. 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 No, it's awesome. Um, for those listening, they may not know that you're actually not from Vancouver, but you're from Vernon. Vernon, you're, yeah. You're Vernonite. Yeah, man. I grew up in a small town that was about 40,000 when I lived there. Um, and yeah, there's not a lot of rappers to look up to or any of that kind of stuff. It's more so, uh, you know, people getting jobs and, and going to Calgary to become, you know, a lawyer or, you know, work on the rigs up north or something like that. Uh, so when I chose to be a rapper, it was a little bit odd. And uh, yeah, I moved to Vancouver to go to audio engineering school in 2006. And I've been there ever since. And um, yeah, it's the best thing I ever did, man, because I feel like if I didn't move to Vancouver, I'd just be maybe a big fish in a small pond in Vernon trying to make it. And I don't, I don't even think it's possible to make it in a town that small. Uh, so I had to get out of there. And uh, yeah, now I've been living in Vancouver. That's where I call home. That's what I represent now. But I got nothing but love for my hometown, Vernon. Well, you're you trying see? to make it. You're up for a Juno this year. How do you feel about your chances on that and the competition? Who else is up there? OK, everybody's saying like we don't have a chance because we're up against Drake and Classified and Shad and, you know what I mean, Rich Kid and stuff. And uh, But I think I'm a firm believer, man, that anybody that's nominated for anything in anything has a chance to at least win it. True. And, uh, you know, I mean, I don't expect to win the award by any means, but it's just great to be nominated, man, to be nominated and recognized for something that, you know, you work so hard on. Like, we do this 24 hours a day, every single day. I give it 100% every single time I'm in the studio, if I'm on stage. My manager doesn't sleep. Like, the guy just, we work, man. Like, that's what we do. So to be recognized for your work is just fantastic, man, and we're just, we're just blessed to even, you know, be nominated for something. So it's cool. You've also put one long day online for free, and that's something a lot of indie artists are doing right now to get their songs out there. Do you feel this helps you connect with a more diverse fan base since it's on the web? I mean, it was a strategic move for us. Like, we didn't know if we were going to put it like online for free or if we were going to sell it when I was creating it. But last minute, we kind of decided that we were going to do it um, free online. I just want, like, I just think that the music's good enough that. Um, I just want the most people to hear it. Like, that's really what it is. It's not a money thing at this point because I know that that's going to come further down the road. Right now, it's a it's a get the music out there kind of thing. So I put everything in that project. We put all, all our own money into it. Uh, you know, um, our label Black Box helped us out with it as well. And, like, um, yeah, I, I'm a firm believer if something's great, it'll catch on. And it's, it's happened with us in the past. Like, the last year, um, I put everything into the Everywhere We Go video. And that went viral for, for Canadian music videos. And, you know, that's what got nominated for the Juno and everything like that. And that's kind of what we did with One Long Day. We put everything into it. Everything into the production, you know, from the re recording, writing. The producers all worked so damn hard on that project, too. Like, I was giving people, we were on, like, revision, like, 14 on, like, Shit's Epic and, like, some of the other songs that we had on, on that. And, like, Dan Weston, the engineer, shouts to him. Like, I mean, he just absolutely killed it. And um, we thought the body of work was strong enough that we just want to give it to the people because we think it's going to catch fire if we just give it out rather than maybe do what some artists would do which isn't the selfish thing, but just a different route, which is selling it. That's cool. That's cool. I want to talk about the We Go brand. Does that have to do with the Everywhere We Go music video of the song, or is that just something kind of you choose to do? You know what I mean? Is, is there a little bit of a theory behind that saying, the We Go? I noticed on your merch store, yeah. a lot of your, uh, your merch had We Go written on it. Yeah, well, like, um, the first time I ever said it was in my song Already There, which was in 2011. It actually came out in 2010. But um, I just said it, and it was just like a phrase that just stuck, man. And I say it in all my songs. It basically just means, like, go harder than anybody else, and you'll get where you want to be kind of thing. It's not really like a crazy, deep, 
deep you know phrase yeah. or anything like that that's just really what it means and it it's part of my brand it's part of who i am it's something i say on records and it's something that we represent as a team it's something that's very um you know cool. we just rep it important thing though is people know it, and i think you're underhyping it because it's gotten almost a million views on youtube and now you've also dropped one uh one more long day which i've mentioned before which sounds a little bit more ballady and old school hip-hop um hip-hop heads may not necessarily love it but do you think it's important to forge ahead with a sound that's representative of the new school? Um, I just try and make the best music I can make, whether that reflects new school stuff, old school stuff that I grew up on. It really doesn't matter to me. Like, I just want to spend my time making music that's going to live longer than a year. I want to make music that lives for 10 years, 40 years, 50 years. That's how I go into it, and that's why our music keeps evolving. That's why we aren't like plateauing or anything like that because we keep pushing ourselves. Like nothing's ever, like people will ask me like, what's, what's your end goal? My end goal, I don't have an end goal. You know what I mean? Like I, it, like, I don't want, like once I get here, I'm still just going to want to get there. And if I, like you look at artists like, you know, Drake and stuff, like no one thought he was going to, you know, he's getting to a stage right now where he's still evolving and still, you know, branching out and doing new, like, exciting, great things and stuff like that. And I don't know, man. I just want to just keep uh, making great music. And um, whether it's new school, old school, whatever, I just want to make the best stuff I can make. Okay, on the album One Long Day, you had spots from, like, Willa, Shad, Cardinal Fishall was on there. You've been working on your major label debut. And uh, is there any way you could give us a hint of who you're working with on that? Any guest spots coming up on that one? Um, yeah, uh, I just started working on it. I've been working on it for uh, like a little bit now, but, um, I can't really give any hints on like features or anything like that. We've got some <laughs> lined up, but, uh, I can tell you that I'm going to be working with a lot of the same producers I worked with on one long day. Rich kid. Uh, like Arthur MacArthur, rich kid, tool man, superville, Alex Lustig, cool. you know, people like that. I'm, I'm going to continue to work with chef. Um, and yeah, I don't know. I just want to keep, keep it in the family. I, one thing that's really important to me is like, I just want to like, um, work with the people that were loyal to me when maybe I wasn't doing as well as I am now or as well as I'm going to be doing. Cause those are the people, man, that really like care. Like they really care. Cause they, they watched it. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? They watched it happen. They were with you when it was happening and stuff like that. So I just want to keep the people that, um, that were, were there before. I want to keep them close to me. And that's cool. like my manager and you know, my DJ, like these are like my best friends. These are people I came up with before I was even anywhere, even close to being good at this. So, so you've been yeah. in it for over ten years now, right? Is that, is I've that been in long? it for one. I've been in like, it for one year. One, like one I've been year. doing it since <laughs> I've been like fifteen years old. So like I mean like it. Yeah, I haven't been in it for like a long time. I've been like we just caught our buzz really after yeah. everywhere we go, which was August thirteenth, two thousand thirteen. So I've been doing it since I've been a little kid. But um, yeah, we. So if you had a piece of advice to give out to someone who's just starting out, wanted to get into the industry, wanted to get their career going, what would it be? I would say take your time and do things right. Like um, nothing, there's no such thing as a handout. There's no such thing as like, you, sometimes you look at an artist, like you look at like Mac Miller or like Macklemore or like something like that and be like, how did he get so big so fast? Oh my God, that's so crazy. No, there's, those people work for years and years before they got there. Like yeah. there's, and you have to be great, man. Like take your time, make the best stuff you can make and be undeniable. If you're undeniable, it's going to come regardless. Like that's one thing we've learned more than ever now. And that's why we work harder than we've ever worked right now, because we understand that in order to get there, you have to be great. So that's why it's always weird when they have the best new artist nominations because then you they're have art. Really they're right? not new. <laughs> People know of them, yeah. and then they're thinking, they okay, are new, though, to like the rest of the world, like, to the mainstream. Yeah. 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 So essentially, they are new artists. Like, yeah, you can put out a single that I could put out a single that I did two years ago that is like a great single, but it's just dated to me and my fan base, which is this big. And then I put it out and it just goes massive because it was that good and it goes massive and worldwide and stuff like that. Now it's a brand new single. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. new is defined by how big it goes, really. Um, one thing I want to touch on that you touched on earlier is being from the Vancouver area. Now, people may not know that they have a hip hop scene and like the way that they know about Drake or Maestro coming from out of Toronto. It's like, yes, we have Snack the Ripper. Yes, we have Van City Live where we're repping hip hop artists trying to come out of Vancouver. But what are the challenges you faced coming out of Vancouver with a sound and identity that's still being formed in regards to hip hop? Well, like 
coming out of Vancouver, I had to leave Vancouver in order to get respect in Vancouver. I had to come out to Toronto. I had to come out to London. I had to, you know, c come out different places and the p uh, like let people know that I was working in different city centers and stuff like that in order to get respect in my own uh, where I'm from. Um, but it, you know, I'm not gonna lie. Like it isn't hard. It's hard, man. Like we do, in Vancouver, we don't really, you know, we don't have a Drake in Vancouver. We don't have like a whole bunch of. Uh, artists that have been successful in hip-hop um you know we got the rascals they they did their thing and shouts to red one and stuff um but like when it really comes down to it like there isn't a crazy scene there it, it, it's growing and we have a lot of talent there's a lot of people doing a lot of great things there and i think there is going to be a crazy scene there but you know we're still working on it so um look out for vancouver there's a lot of talented artists there matt brevner you know shouts to snack the ripper shouts to you know kai and there's all sorts of artists doing their thing there so um, I think it's just going to take a little bit of evolving and, and working on it. All right, I was checking out your Twitter on Sunday. Uh, Wamiko, or I'm not too sure how to say his name, honestly, tweeted you, make a song for the stoners, to which you replied, I don't smoke. What's your take on so much hip-hop and rap revolving around like the party scene, smoking and drinking? It's cool, man. It's always been a part of the culture. Like yeah. As far as hip-hop goes back, man, people have been talking about that kind of stuff. And, uh, you know, a lot of music is made for partying and for smoking weed too. I just don't make that type of music. Maybe I do. Maybe maybe stoners love my shit. I really don't know. I haven't done like uh, I haven't done like a Wiz Khalifa tour or anything like that yet. I haven't like really yeah, old got into my stoner mecca yet. Yeah. But like, um, I, like I, I don't know. Like when I make music, I just try to make good music, and I think that like everywhere we go might be a party song. Like I've seen people wild out to that song. Yeah. It might be the drunk. You know, club songs. I've seen it get played in the club. I see the way people react to it. But did I make that song drunk with a bunch of like balloons and a disco ball in the room? Nah. You know what I mean, I just made it like you know, just because I wanted to make some good music. All right. Speaking of the t subject of drinking, I'm curious. What's your take on the neck nominations, neck nominations that have been going around the internet right now? I think the neck nominations are absolutely ridiculous. I don't mess with the neck nominations. I'm just gonna say that. Thank you. I don't know, man. I watched a few, and like people are just doing dumb shit, man. Like. I like I think it's cool like whatever you guys want to you know get drunk like I'm I'm all down for a turn up like don't get it wrong like I love partying I was shotgun and beer hell yeah. yeah all my friends be doing that I can't even shotgun beer but um <laughs> uh like but like just some of the things I've seen people do it's just like okay and some like I've been nominated for like a couple like people just keep nominating me and I'm just like Nominated nah. by Junos, nominated by people for neck yeah, nominations. You won't catch me doing the neck <laughs> nomination, so quit nominating me. <laughs> <laughs> now, where does he make a point to talk to your fans personally after your shows? Does this make life on the road easier because you know you're reaching different people, even though you're far away from home? Like reaching out to fans after? Yeah. Oh man, I'm all about that. I'm all about like just connecting with my fans, saying what's up to them. Like I'm meeting a lot of new fans on this tour, and I'm meeting a lot of fans that have been fans of me since the stroll and Good Morning and you know Good News and uh, like Lightyear mixtape and stuff like that, which is really cool. Um, I'm a firm believer, man, that nobody can spread your music like the fans can. Like straight up like they're the most important part of the equation without them like a uh, deal or any of that stuff is irrelevant man because nobody's gonna be coming out to your shows I, I i've seen artists be able to be on the radio uh you know have massive videos on much music but they can't sell out a show anywhere because they don't have any real fans so like when i when i um connect with fans i just try and let them know that they're important to me and i try and connect with as many fans as i can online or or at the shows and just let them know i'm a real person and i'm not like some Airheaded dude, you know? Yeah. Alright, I think that's all we got. Say cool. thanks, Unreal.